Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. And the topic of this 10 minute moan is yet again the hate crime laws. However, it looks as if there's a wee bit of potential good news with it, with reports suggesting, and sorry, confirming, that Wednesday the Tories will use their business slot at Parliament to put forward a vote to repeal this stupid law. Now, how successful that will be will remain to be seen. However, I think it is quite warming that the travel is in the right direction. So, I'm just using the STV for source here. Uh, their headline is Vote to be tabled in bid to repeal controversial hate crime laws. The party previously claimed the Hate Crime Act is the biggest ever burden placed on Scotland's police force. That would imagine be the Tories that we said that. A bid to repeal Scotland's new hate crime law is to be launched this week by the Scottish Conservatives. The party is using its business slot at Holyrood on Wednesday to table a vote on whether the legislation should be scrapped. The Act came into force April 1, with more than 7,000 complaints being made in the first week, and concerns have been raised over its impact of freedom of expression. Tory Justice Spokesperson Russell Finlay previously claimed that the Hate Crime Act is the biggest ever burden on police force in the Scotland's police force. The SNP and Scottish Green majority at Holyrood means a motion to repeal the Act, sorry the law, will almost certainly fail, but the Conservatives are appealing for fellow opposition parties and the more sensible nationalists to back their position. Labour and Liberal Democrats supported the bill when it was passed in 2021. Speaking about the motion, Finlay said, Hamza Yousaf's disastrous hate crime law has caused utter chaos in the fortnight since its introduction. It is proving every bit as unworkable as many critics warned and must be repealed. As well as being an unacceptable risk to free speech, it is taking a huge toll on Scotland's police officers they have been deluged with thousands of complaints, many of them vexatious, from individuals out to settle scores. Look at my last two videos about Morag, age 74 story, and it'll give you an idea of the type of complaints it's attracting. Officer numbers are at their lowest level since 2008, and the police are completely turning a blind eye to certain crimes, so this increased workload is completely unsustainable. The Scottish Conservatives were the only party who opposed the SNP legislation when it went through Parliament. We now appeal to Labour and Lib Dem MSPs and the more sensible nationalists to admit they made a huge mistake and back our call for its repeal. The Tory motion, which will be debated on Wednesday, reads that the Scottish Parliament believes that the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Act 2021 should be repealed. The new Law creates an offence of stirring up hatred against protected characteristics including age, sexual orientation and transgender. An offence on the basis of race has been in the statute book in Scotland since 1986. So, that's what the Tories have got planned and good luck to them. However, as the article states, if the SNP and the Greens decide they want to say no to this vote, then it will fail. However, some of you might find what I'm about to say unbelievable, but I do actually have a fa have faith in probably no more than a handful of SNP MSPs who may be prepared to vote against the party's conscience and vote with their own conscience. If they do that, we could be in for an interesting Wednesday in Parliament. So I will watch keenly what happens on Wednesday at Holyrood. Just to give you a wee update as well, um, this morning I had a wee chat with Morag, who is the 74-year-old from Troon, who was arrested on Tuesday, was told by the arresting officers that she had to go to the police station due to the new law that came into, the first of, into power on the 1st of April, which would suggest to any living human being that that meant the Hate Act. Once she got there, the police then released her after questioning about two and a half hours later, and then when they were asked by the press to comment, they said that they arrested her under a Section 38 offence, which is slightly different. However, unless you disbelieve a 74-year-old, then Mar Morag 
quite clearly told me on camera and newspapers when she was arrested, she was told she was being taken to a station because of the laws that came into force on the 1st of April. A lot of nationalists are now grabbing onto this and suggesting that she's a liar and suggesting that it had nothing to do with the Hate Crime Act, etc, etc, which I find pretty despicable. People are trying to point score now over the word of a 74-year-old who was wrongfully arrested on Tuesday. That's quite despicable. However, I spoke to Morag just before I came on to record this video. She's in good spirits. She knew about, she was actually phoning me to tell me about what the Tory party were doing because she'd had a phone call from someone quite high up in the Tory party, who I shan't name, just in case, don't want to be named, but someone well known and in high position within the Scottish Tories. Uh, phoned to make sure she was all right, asked her a wee bit about what had happened to her and gave her the good news that this um, will be getting voted on on Wednesday. That made her smile. Morag was also suggesting that she's got even more people coming to do mainstream media coverage of her story, which I think is fantastic. Now, I know I put my stuff out on new media and in social media, but I do believe that the mainstream media has a place to play in um, helping with social issues like this. And I'm delighted that this second um, news outlet are following the lead by The Sun, the Daily Express, the two newspapers that covered it so far, and uh, GB News, who had her on just after I interviewed her yesterday and Sunday. So now that she's getting to another national um, television channel, I'm delighted for her, and it will help spread her story. She's also very humbled um, by the response she's getting from the public. And she was certainly a far happier lady I spoke to on the phone today, than I'd spoken to on Saturday on the phone and on Sunday yesterday when I was fortunate enough and grateful enough to be invited into her home to interview her. So it's good that uh, Morag's story is um, reaching far and wide and I'm quite sure the uh, news station are going out to interview her today will not be the last. The story is horrific, 74-year-old arrested, told she had to go to a police station because of this new law that came in for what was a, obviously um, just someone trying to cause a bit of bother. So, you know, I've not made much comment on the person that complained and there's good reason for doing that. Um, that might turn into something else, but even if it didn't turn into something else, um, I've got good reason why I've not, I've not spoke too much about the other party. But if that turns into something else, then I may nick down to see Morag again to get an update on camera to what's going on with that situation. Um, from a personal point of view, I'm delighted the feedback that I've seen out the amount of uh, people that have watched the two videos now about Morag, um, the one without her when I've done a 10 minute one, and the one the following day where I had done a short half hour podcast with her. And the feedback from it has been fantastic on YouTube. On Twitter, a wee bit different, the normal lunatics actually suggesting that I'm a liar, Morag's a liar, we're just hate the hate bill and that's why we're trying to plow, plow into that. Try to totally ignore what Morag was told when she was arrested, that it was down to these new laws that came out in the 1st of April. And these people who just cannot see anything wrong with the SNP grabbing onto the one line that the police told the newspaper that the arrest was under a section 38. However, that's only if you ha listen to half the story, because the police did say that there was elements of hate crime attached to the investigation. So these horrific people, who can watch if they wish a, a woman of 74's reaction on camera, and feel that it's um, they've got to protect the SNP by calling her a liar and all this stuff, you are sad. Sad individuals, I believe the last remaining remnants of a cult, because day by day, there's more and more people seeing the truth, seeing the SNP for what they are, and commenting on social media that they'll never vote for them again. So those who are still defending them to the hilt on anything that they can are a diminishing number. I'm delighted, and I wish the Tories in Westminster would just call an election 
today. So we could get to the ballot box, get to the polling booths, and show the SNP, arms of Yusuf, exactly what Scottish people think of them, and that is not just unionists. You're now turning off swathes of nationalists with your behaviour and your stupidity. And long may it continue. Now, as usual, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and your comments below are always gratefully read. And as I say at the end of all my videos, unless you're Hamza Yousaf, SMP, all their cult, everybody else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.